I thought I was gonna get punched in the face by an Irishman. That would have been awesome, though. That's my Irish response to him. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm David McCrary, and this is On Edge with real questions and shocking answers. Today, I'm hanging out with Darren Mulligan from We Are Messengers. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to ask some questions, and while we're talking, we're going to be playing a game that shocks the last person to press the button on these handles. The shock gets more intense over time, and we've got a few twists toward the end that makes it a little more challenging. So let's get started. I love meeting new people and talking to you guys, but this game is awful. That's way to build it up. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. How excited are you to be here? Yeah. This is your last chance to leave if you want to. Yeah. No, I'm good. To good. Go. All right. I'm ready. Is there anything, uh, anything that people believe, or any any uh, stereotypes that people believe about Ireland that are false, or there's something we should know that uh, I, don't, I don't even know what it is. Uh, a lot of the stereotypes are true, you know. I'm gonna watch this button, bro. <laughs> A lot of them are true. I think one of the ones that are false is that we still ride around on donkeys and horses and carriages. Uh -huh. We're a very advanced country. That is not true. <laughs> ah! Ow! Come on! No. How do I lose the first time every time? He flinched. You flinched before, and I'm like, I gotta press this button. I didn't even see that. I, I may have hit it too soon. <laughs> mm. That's the other thing. If you hit it too soon, you lose. That's dope. Ah. Oh, thank God. I thought I got it. Ah. You did well. At least you didn't cuss. <laughs> I did not out loud. Dingo! <laughs> Dingo was his name -o. <laughs> That might have been Bingo. Bingo. I think it was I Bingo. You grew up in a small town in Ireland. Aye. You now live in Nashville, yeah. big old city. What, uh, what values or traditions from Ireland are you bringing to Nashville and, and yeah. uh, your family? And yeah, I think just uh, trying to live a life of simplicity, trying to value things like walking outside with your kids, not getting fascinated with buying things Ow! or having stuff. He's, he's not even, he's really answering the questions too, which makes me mad. I'm not even looking at this, I'm watching you. And as soon as I see your hand go, I'm hitting this button, bro. So, um, I love the simple things. I love things that don't cost anything. Those uh -huh. are the important things. We put yeah. so much emphasis on the things we can earn or buy or have or take. And really, none of those things really matter. Wow. You know, so we went home down for a few weeks of Christmas there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a tiny little cottage up in the hills away from everything. And it was just beautiful. Like, yeah. nobody for thousands of acres just hiking every day. Uh -huh. And it reminded me of why I started doing music, because I fell in love with God. Wow. And so I think here you can get caught up in the need to be successful or the need to drive towards that. Mm -hmm. and, and last year and this year, it's just been a year of me being grateful and thankful for the simple wow. things and for what we have and what we do, you know? Uh, all right, so let's talk about uh, influence, like musical influence. About a Girl, was that the first song you learned to play on a guitar? Dude, that's good, where'd yeah. you find that? Hey, I that's, got people that That's research. buried, bro. They did that acoustic unplugged record, I think it was live uh -huh. in New York, maybe it was, I can't remember, but it was unplugged on MTV. And I remember Kurt Cobain sitting singing about a girl. And it was then that I fell in love with voices that, that weren't pristine, but voices that carried emotion. Like carried... musicians that were awful? Is that what you're saying? Well, with no, that's kind of harsh. you got to give Kurt some credit. <laughs> he, he wasn't the most gifted of musicians, but he knew how to make people feel things. Yeah. Because so often you have incredibly talented musicians that don't really know how to dig into the deep places, the dark places. Mm -hmm. And so people like Kirk did that, Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash. Yeah, I was gonna say, John, uh, Willie Nelson, your dad yeah. listened to him a lot. Yeah, so. yeah. Like, we went to music as a way to escape, you uh -huh. know, poverty or disappointment or heartache when we were when we were young. My parents used to dance through all of that. The funny, I was just talking to my dad yesterday. Let me hit this we, while uh, you're answering this question. I forgot to, <laughs> you're doing good. You're answering well, yeah, very well. Button. I was talking to my dad yesterday and Something really sad happened at home recently, mm -hmm. and I uh, I wrote him a song last night. I still haven't sent it to him, but I might once I get you shocked on this here next one. I'm waiting now. I'm ready. <laughs> Come on! It's happening quick! I'm hitting that button as soon as it turns green! This is... That made me laugh. So, what I was saying was, the way music gets at us is like, chatting to my dad yesterday, um, he, he lost his brother, his brother passed away yesterday, so my, my uncle. Um, and I was sitting last night, eating a sandwich. <laughs> I bought some Irish cheese, I'm addicted to Irish cheese, uh -huh. right? And I just couldn't resist going in and playing my guitar. 
And I'm trying to like spend more time with family, but the guitar kept calling me. And right. I went in and I sat for the next hour and just wrote a song. And I cried over that song just really? flat out. And so we have a way of running to music because we're terrible at articulating how we feel. Uh -huh. That's You want to talk about Irish people? Irish people find it really hard to say how they feel. Really? Like I'm chatting to me dad yesterday on FaceTime. He's talking about his brother and his eyes are full of tears, but he won't let them fall. Yeah, wow. You know, because we tend to bury everything. And so I think one good thing about America is that you guys have taught me that, and I don't want to start quoting our songs, but like it's okay to not be okay, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I've learned that it's okay to be a fella who's strong and who protects, but it can also fall apart sometimes. Because if yeah. we don't do that, that's when we get trapped, you know? That's good, so, wow. Yeah. See, this is, and this is the tough part. This happens with a lot of interviews. We ask, uh, <laughs> we ask these questions, they get very real, and then we have to go back into stupidity. I love, I love this. this is oh, I'm sure you do. Life. You haven't been shocked yet, Darren. I might take one just to see how it feels. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's, right, let's do, do that. It. All right, so you came from uh, like the metal hardcore scene. I did, I, yeah. Yeah. I had very skinny jeans. Uh, these ones are skinny, but they're made from lycra, so they stretch. So they stretch a little bit. I yeah. call them That's the Jane Fonda jeans, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you, is there anything you miss about the hardcore scene? Any? Oh, bro, listen, I put on Metallica, the Black Album, the uh -huh. other night. Had my kids listening to it. Right. And I just miss that power sometimes. Ah, I got it. <laughs> ah, right yeah! There. Right there. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The, just right the, fist went. <laughs> the look on his face terrified me for just a second. He got very real and very serious. <laughs> Ooh, that's, I thought I was going to get punched in the face by that's, an Irishman. That's that would have been awesome, though. That's I'll my be Irish response to pain. I'm like, <laughs> somebody hurt me, i got to hurt somebody. Um, yeah, in that moment, I felt so angry. <laughs> I apologize. You were talking about Metallica and hardcore yeah, yeah. and people are shocking me. Right, yeah. It's a natural See, response. Okay. You weren't even listening to my answer. You got I heard it. I heard Metallica Black. Like I said, I grew up uh, listening to rock and roll. That was really uncomfortable. Yeah, it's not fun. I'm gonna get to you next. <laughs> See, I have a feeling yeah. you will. So my kids into like Bieber and you know, all of this stuff. And uh, so I was taking them through like music memory lane. Right. You know, and I was like, here's Weezer. Uh -huh. And you know, here's Led Zeppelin. And I said, here's my favorite metal album ever. It's the Black Album by Metallica. Yeah. And I played it for him. He said, Daddy, this is amazing. And so then I thought I'd trick him. I played a new song for our, from our new record that hasn't been released. It's called Knock Me Down. It's a big old rock song. Uh -huh. And he said, oh, Metallica, this is amazing. So that's not, that's us. That's awesome. <laughs> he didn't want to admit it was good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How know? old is he? He's 10. That's good. He thinks that's he's good. 15, but he's I got I got a 19-year-old that knows Ooh. a lot of 80s music because Come I got on. him. Yeah, absolutely. What was your favorite 80s? Band? So, like I said, I grew up uh, listening to hair bands. So when I met my wife in uh, 92, I had hair, no joke, hair to hair. Come like on. all the way around. I'll have to show you pictures later. I was, I, uh, yeah. But, um, and I named my kid Sebastian. Sebastian Bach was the lead singer of Skid oh, Row. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I. So, Skid, Skid Row. Skid Row was Farner, probably, yeah. White Snake, all that. Oh, yeah, jazz. all of them. Yeah, yeah, all the hair bands. Motley Crue, did you get into yep, that? Yep, yeah. 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 I do magic for a living. Oh, uh, and wow. I'll show you stuff later, but. Cool. I've done the same trick for years and years and years. Like, and I have to make it feel like it's the first time I've done it every time I do it. How does that, that that's the kind of the same thing with you getting a lot of the same questions from people, uh, <laughs> interviews and having to answer the same question and trying to avoid small talk and just not sound. How do no. you make it and keep it fresh when you're, when you're asked, interviewed by people? Let's tell the truth. And I listen a lot. I listen to what people are actually asking. I watch their face for their emotions. Mm -hmm. And then I give them something that they need, not necessarily what they want, you know? Right. I'm gonna get this button, hold on. I'll come back to that. Dang it! Prince it's Lord, he's on my side. <laughs> see that? God knows who the good guys are. Right and here. see, here's the deal. Ah, I kicked my foot <laughs> on the. I kind of, I'm a wuss, so I kind of let go, but I still hold on, and it gets, it like all the charge goes into this finger. Oh, that made me feel good. 
What did you ask me? See, that's what you've been doing. You've been asking me questions, sitting waiting to hit that button. Yeah. I've been working. I'm trying to throw you off, and you guys, uh, are, everybody's still really good at this. What was the question? Oh, yeah. How do you keep it fresh when oh, you yeah, ask yeah. questions? Yeah. I think it's the same thing the way we keep it fresh with our set. You know, we go out with a set list. So It's true. Like this weekend, we went out and we played uh, March for Life in DC, and we rocked the universe down in Orlando. Uh, the same set both nights, uh -huh. <laughs> but not once did we make it through the same set. Yeah. Because we leave enough room to go where the crowd are going. Yeah. See, we don't want it to be, we're coming and we're gonna impose our set list or our conversation or our agenda on you. We're coming and going, wouldn't it be dope if we had an experience together? Yeah. Where we had conversations together? So a lot of the times in those interview situations at shows or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll ask the audience questions. I'm like, what do you think? Yeah. Wow. I, I want to hear what they think because I actually care about it. Yeah. I care less about being famous uh, than I do about actually having a relationship with people. And it's really tricky because you know, you get sucked into it, you get sucked into thinking you are something because you had a wee bit of success. Mm -hmm. um, and it's taken me the last year to put all that thing to death and just wow. enjoy people for, for who they are and what this is. You yeah, know? that's good, that's a good answer. These are very good answers. All right, so we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna change things up. You don't have to worry about it right now. All right, go. Thank we're gonna you. do a different kind of challenge. Yes, oh, you have you. to. Yeah, you I have to. I'm not very dexterous, bro. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna get paper cuts. All right, you ready? D oh, go cradle. Did you say cradle? Cradle. I can't. I have no dexterity. <laughs> See, this is where. Oh, come on. This is where uh, being a magician pays off. Dude, if someone. Right? Ah, oh, this is ridiculous. Did you work for the post office? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the messenger. <laughs> oh, very good. You should be better at this. this. Cradle. Uh, you're gonna have to tell me what cradle means. I have no idea what it means. You it's just my, say random words? Well, it's my attempt to not say cross words. Oh, okay, that's fair. I'm in recovery for being Irish. Oh, okay. Um, genius, All right. He beat me by You want to count them together? Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. count them together. You ready? Seven, eight, nine, ten. What a load. Eleven! That's a load of rubbish, bro. I think he started early. <laughs> oh, that is not even true. Because they said go, and I, I was like, oh, can we go? And you're already three in. I have no reason to trust you, but I'll trust you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All, right. All right. Your newest album. Sir. Uh, very real topics on this album. Sir. Um, how does it feel to be very authentic and not speak in metaphors? And is it important <laughs> in Christian music, especially, to sing about real problems and not yeah. water and waves? Well, I think, <laughs> I think that God uses different kinds of people to communicate different sides. I'm gonna just win this and answer that question, right? Hold on, this is, this is too much, bro, I can't. Ah! <laughs> it. Well, he was just saying right before that that he was gonna win, uh, and he didn't. Uh, and he didn't. That was, that was, that was really annoying. That was, that was good? That was so, <laughs> oh! That's harsh, bro. You invite a man into your house and you're like, Virginia. Well, it's not my house, technically, so. Uh, <laughs> you invite a man into a stranger's house and you're like, you him. Yeah. I don't think that the people that write in metaphors aren't been real. I think that's their way of expressing their faith. Like artistically? Artistically. I think for me, I don't understand a God that lives in the clouds. I don't know anything about him. Mm -hmm. But I understand. Uh, God in the flesh in Christ who dwelt with us um, to allow us to be reconciled to him. So we want to write songs for people, for humans. Mm -hmm. We don't write for the church congregation on a Sunday. Right. That's, that's not who we're writing songs for. Like We appreciate it when they sing those songs, but we write songs for us. Uh -huh. We want to sing songs that carry us through dark times. We want to sing songs that express the joy and the love and the hope of Jesus. And honestly, we want our songs to start conversations. Mm -hmm. Our songs aren't about finishing conversations, they're about starting wow. them. And so these songs are designed to allow people to get to the place where they go, oh, you feel like that too? Uh -huh. And to, the greatest compliment we ever get is when people say, you put words to the things I could not say. Wow. And so that's why we write songs for ourselves and then to put words to the things that people cannot express so that they might find release and hope. So. Uh, all right, all right. Let's, let's talk. Uh, here's another serious question. Okay. To get back into stupidity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about, you You grew up Catholic. All right. And, and then switched 
to Protestant Christian. I don't know what switched isn't the right word. Switch is a, uh, switch is a weird word. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a draft, like an NFL draft. You were Catholic and you became yeah. like a Protestant Christian. Uh, <laughs> what, what, did, what was that transformation like? Uh, whoops, hold yeah. on before you. Bro, that don't was. Don't forget I you. get two again. Yeah, oh yeah, till the end of the game. I get two again. No, you lost. These you rules. learn to was... seal envelopes. Don't call yourself a messenger if you can't All send right. them. Oh, you. All right, here we go. All right, come All right. on. You still remember the question? No. Uh, the transformation, transformation from Catholic to. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so I grew up Catholic, which was a very kind of traditional, regular experience. I have no idea what I'm saying, but I got you. Yes, you do! Oh, I got me too! Oh, what happened? Ah! I got you, then it shocked me. Dude. It's not, look, it's a, I'm gonna be honest, it's a fun game, but it's a cheap little game. Some <laughs> things make you crossed every once in a while. I was about to laugh and then it got I, I wanna watch that back, because I feel like you were getting a little arrogant, pointing at me, and then it got you. Uh, I was so excited there, bro. Oh. Right. Okay, the question, the switch. Yeah. How does the switch happen? So, you grow up in like a Roman Catholic family. You, uh -huh. uh, you do all the sacraments, you go to church. But it's a very different experience of Catholicism in Ireland than it is here. There, it's very much a, a cultural thing. Okay. It's kind of who you are. That's your nationality, almost. Gotcha. Um, so, there was no love or relationship with God. It was just doing things, trying wow. to do the right things. But I say this all the time to our people, that the gospel is not about being good, the gospel is about being in love. Mm -hmm. Two very different things. So I, I tend to say I'm a follower of the way. Uh -huh. So the early believers in Jesus said we're followers of the way. Mm -hmm. They didn't even refer to themselves as Christians. Right. So that's kind of where I've gone back to, realizing that theology is important, uh, that tradition is important, but above all of those is the love of Christ, is the relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the transition was hard, dude. Yeah, I lost a lot of friends. Yeah, uh, we had a lot of people turn their backs on me. Wow. Um, and my family who who followed that way too. But I think as time has gone on, like I just my, my sister came to know Jesus three weeks ago. Oh, really? You know, at 40, That's awesome. 46, 47 years of age. Uh huh. And I just go, God, you're so good. You know, he's yeah. so good because they've seen how we live, they've seen how our lives have changed, and they realize that we haven't turned into some kind of cult members that are wandering right, right. through the forest, you know, <laughs> that singing these strange songs. All right, so go ahead and grab one of the handles. We're taping our hands to the... Oh, that's ridiculous. Yes, bro. it is. It's... I've got to tell you, I've done a lot of interviews, bro, but this is the strangest one I've ever done. <laughs> I'm yeah, I like hearing that. Okay. You are very vocal on your spiritual spiritual spirituality i'm going to say that word again uh we don't have to edit it out because it's funny that i couldn't say it spirituality uh okay. politics all of that all right people nowadays can't get along how do we get along with different beliefs whether it's like i got a buddy who's in a hard a hardcore atheist but we can get along we you know, i love the guy he loves me it's but how does everybody do that yeah do all things in love. People will receive anything that is given in the spirit of love. That's how we do it. Grow up, stop being so offended by everything. Oh! Ow! Yep, it lasts longer than that. It lasts a little longer. <laughs> My hands are so hairy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've got a, a strip right there. No. Ah. Oh, we need some hiking wipes for these things before the next dude comes in, bro. They're like so sweaty. Oh. <laughs> that was the quietest <laughs> I've ever had any moment in this. <laughs> that was, and it seemed to go a lot longer than any of the yeah, others. That was intense. We gotta love people when they do what we disagree with as much as we do when they agree with what we do. So I think a big part of why you're friends with your mate mm -hmm. is your common ground is first this mutual respect, love, um, kindness. Yeah. Those are the things that draw people to God. Um, it's okay to have different opinions. And like I'm totally okay sitting with someone who says, uh, I'm pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Dude, we can go and have coffee too. Yeah. And we can laugh and joke. And then we can have hard conversation and leave. Uh, hugging each other and being friends. Yes, I'm, yeah. That's I, the way forward for America. The way forward is not through division. Right. The way forward is through unity. 
find the things we have in common, let's start from there mm -hmm. and then learn to respect each other irregardless of what we believe. Love it. Man, this has been a good it's been dope. This has been good. I'm impressed. I think not he's trying I, to convince himself that not, this has been good. <laughs> the answers have been amazing. The game has been awful. My hand still hurts. Does your hand hurt? My hand hurts. See, he's still got a grip. I don't feel like I have a grip. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Dude, that was dope. Yeah. This is amazing. This is fun. It's so annoying, but like. <laughs> if you like this content, hit the subscribe button. Is it there? Down there? Somewhere. And you know what? Even if you don't like it, just hit the subscribe button. It's not gonna hurt you to hit the subscribe button and it makes us feel really good about ourselves. Please. And like us. Anything else? And send us gift certificates to Mexican restaurants. Anything else?